The Chaos Demons of Corn are now a playable faction in Battle Sector. And if you like melee fighting, then this might be the faction for you. Only 3 of the 8 demon unit roster have ranged attacks, the Cornite demons having the least amount of total different units in the entire game. The special charging abilities present in the Blood Crusher, Flesh Hound and Skull Cannon units are a must use in order to get your troops within melee range faster as well as dealing some extra damage to a lot of enemy units. The mounted unit, the Blood Crusher, can deal a lot of total damage because you can run it through many enemy units, dealing small amounts of damage to each. Unfortunately, this will place your Blood Crushers or Skull Cannons in very vulnerable tactical positions. However, since most enemy units are ranged in nature, they are not best served by point blank range. Likewise, this creates a threat that has to be dealt with away from the main bulk of your army, thus diverting at least a few units worth of shots from your main damage dealers. And spreading that damage around is a good idea seeing as how the Demons of Corn are unexpectedly squishy and this kinda makes sense from an in-universe point of view because Demons aren't actually matter. They are physical manifestations of energy from the warp. It doesn't really matter how many demons you kill in real space, they simply get recycled back to the warp. In Battle Sector, they seem to be pretty vulnerable to range damage, which is kind of the opposite of the actual Warhammer 40k lore, but one way the game compensates both for the total smaller number of units and this extra squishiness is allowing three of the more expensive solo model hero units to have summoning abilities. The ability is on a 2 turn cooldown and will spawn a random demon unit onto the field. Sometimes you'll summon another unit that also has the summoning ability. I said in the Orcs DLC video to get ready for heavy losses, but not even the Orc losses are as massive as demon losses. This has been the only faction that I actually lost or had to withdraw from fights with, at least at the very start before I got a better sense of how the units work. So as a general tip, what you have to do in order to have a strong and versatile Cornite Demon Army is to field at least two Bloodmasters and two Soul Grinders. The Bloodmaster can summon units and attacks twice, while the Soul Grinder has decent ranged accuracy and damage. You need to supplement them with at least two Skull Cannons and one Demon Prince, but suffice to say the Cornite Demons benefit from having lots of powerful units on the field because their basic units are very expendable. The Bloodthirster is indeed possibly the coolest looking model in the entire game, but unfortunately its size makes it a priority for ranged enemy units. It's still worth getting one to at least see how they play, but their presence isn't a must have in an army of up to 2500 points. You'll be much better served by a Demon Prince who can fire at range, has two attacks and can summon. The demon model and ability tree in planetary supremacy mode is even smaller than that of the orcs and this means you'll gain access to all your units much faster than with other factions, but that's only because there's considerably fewer units to both unlock and in total. The command abilities are not really that useful either, the 2 point ability is what caught my attention because it drains 50 enemy momentum in a pretty large area which is kinda cool, but otherwise they're not as impactful as the command abilities of other factions. At first glance, the Demons of Corn faction feels a bit like an afterthought, compared to the previous DLCs, at least when it comes to the number of total units. The models look and sound great, and it's a fun faction to play, especially when you have a crap load of summoners and increase your army by several new units, which can easily be sacrificed and thus preserving your veterans, but the much smaller unit roster kinda stops it from being as cool as it could be, I think. That said, the DLC is 3 times cheaper than the previous ones, so nobody is asking the player base to pony up full DLC price for less content, so when taking that into consideration, it's more than worth the asking price. If you want some more videos about Battle Sector, click the link on the screen. I've been Stephen Anson, thank you very much for watching, I have a Patreon, and I'll see you in my next video, Emperor Willing.